Welcome to Nintendo Prime. We have a bevy of news stories here today. Five big ones dropping your way. And uh, before I get into those stories, I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, if this is the first time you've ever checked out a Nintendo Prime video, I would appreciate it if you would drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel if you end up enjoying what you see. And without further ado, let's get right into the gaming news, starting with our very first story. And that story is about Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp. So, interestingly enough, uh, when Nintendo delayed this game outside of this, you know, this month, outside of April, and decided that they were going to just wait for current world events to sort of calm down eventually before they release a game that's, you know, literally has war in its name, uh, some people were able to preload the game. And, you know, it wasn't like a, an extremely common thing. Not a ton of people actually got it preloaded on their system, but some did. And one user in particular, when launch day came, it somehow authenticated with Nintendo servers, allowing them to play it just as if they would have normally on release day. And this person has posted up a numerous amount of clips and screenshots, clearly proving they are playing the game. They are playing it on a Switch Lite, so you're not getting like, you know, direct feed capture stuff through a capture card. This is just using Switch's inbuilt, you know, you can record 30 second clip kind of thing. Uh, but still, it's really cool to see this stuff get out there and the thing is uh nintendo's already been in contact with her and uh will be revoking her access and giving her a full refund for the game what's interesting though is that since this is on their primary switch they can't get it to work on other switches because every time you load the game they have to authenticate your account she actually if she puts airplane mode on can retain access for about 30 days this is actually something that surprisingly not a lot of switch gamers are aware of which maybe it's not so shocking considering we're in the middle of the switch era and most of us are always connected all the time but for those who don't know your switch account needs to be authenticated once every 30 days for digital purchases. Now, the primary reason that this authentication method exists isn't because they need to authenticate so you can play a game. It's actually to protect your own account in case you get hacked or if your Switch gets stolen because without this protection, someone could theoretically steal your Switch and you could lose access to all of your digital games. You wouldn't be able to change your primary account off of that Switch to anything else. All your other systems would only be able to access it with secondhand authentication. If they change your password or somehow figure all that out you'd be really really screwed but doing these online auth checks allows nintendo to verify that you are the person that you're supposed to be by forcing the person who stole it to have to log in so what's interesting with all of this in protecting your digital purchases is it's also brought on a whole debate over man i can't play my digital games offline forever even with my primary account what the heck yeah, there's always going to be a concern that down the line, Nintendo doesn't remove the required auth, then the servers go down, and then you lose access to your digital library. This has obviously been a concern with digital for a while, but we have no evidence to suggest they wouldn't just remove that online authorization requirement someday after Switch's life cycle comes to an end. But hey, you know what? As I told this person, because I, I tweeted to her directly, I said, hey, just make sure you put it on airplane mode. You'll get 30 days to play the game for free. Nintendo's not gonna come after you so long as you don't live stream it, which live streaming Switch Lite's not exactly easy to do anyways. Enjoy the game, and then when the auth comes up, obviously the game's no longer on your account, so when it goes to authorize it, it'll just, it just won't let you play it anymore. So, you know, hey, it's kind of cool though that at least somebody out there gets to play this game. I actually think that, you know, there's nothing really hidden here. These are just remakes or like remasterings of old games. So we already know everything. There's nothing to really spoil. But hey, somebody gets to enjoy a game I wish I was playing right now. Today has been a, a quite an interesting day though for Nintendo's next big game coming out on the platform and that is Nintendo Switch Sports because today official previews have dropped from many YouTubers and outlets who got to go to a Nintendo sanctioned area and actually play the game and get direct feed gameplay and all of that. They got to play most of the sports. Some outlets only got to play like one sport. Some got to play all of them. I think it just kind of depends on how big of a deal your outlet is. I don't know how Nintendo made those decisions and no they weren't in my inbox asking me if i would like to come out and preview it 
might have been willing to make that flight, Nintendo. You should uh, hit up my email, Nathan at NintendoPrime.net. Anyways, so uh, the previews, I just want to bring these up, not because they exist. And if you're interested in more information, you should go watch them because I'm not going to like dig through everyone's previews and tell you everything they said. I'm going to give you a general overview of what the general feelings are on the various sports. And I'm really going to focus on like three of them. So one is volleyball. It pretty much seems the consensus from everyone who played the volleyball is that it's not very good doesn't work very well. There's a lot of reasons uh, for why they feel like it doesn't play very well, doesn't feel good, but hey, that is just something to keep in the back of your mind that maybe that's not gonna be a sport people enjoy, or maybe Nintendo can hear these you know, messages and tweak it and try to make it more fun. All the games do require motion controls. I don't think that needs to be um, you know, too big of a shocker there. Wii Sports has always required motion controls. Now, the other on the other side of the coin, people's favorite game obviously seems to be bowling. Bowling, it works flawlessly, a four player split, split screen multiplayer, meaning four people can actually bowl all at the same time now. That's a lot of fun. Um, pretty much all the other sports are passable. Soccer is one of those hit and miss. Some people really enjoyed the soccer, some people didn't. But it does sound like pretty much every other sport in the package besides soccer and volleyball is enjoyed by all, and people had a ton of fun with it. So uh, I honestly think that Nintendo Switch Sports could be incredible. A couple more sports getting added later this year. Who knows on future DLC pass this year. So I'm just excited to see what happens with this game. I know there was some debate over the customization and should Mii's go away. I don't know. They all seem to like the customization when they got to customize their characters. So, uh, yeah, yeah, this is just Nintendo. It is what it is. Maybe the Mii's are creepy to you now. Maybe they're not. Maybe you're over them. Maybe you want Nintendo to have a completely different avatar system these days. But whatever. This is what we get. Uh, Nintendo Switch Sports is available at the end of this month. So unless you've been living under a literal rock this weekend, and you know what? I shouldn't insult people who actually live under rocks. You guys are living the good life. But here's the thing, Kingdom Hearts 4 was announced this weekend. A really interesting announcement, a nice trailer put together showing a brand new Sora, and there's like debates over Sora's look and debates over this game. Uh, and you know, is this actual in-game graphics? Then you have like developers coming out saying, oh, this is in-engine visuals in Unreal Engine 4, but the final game is gonna be Unreal Engine 5. Why are they making Unreal Engine 4 and then going to 5? I don't know, why aren't they just straight making it in 5? I don't know, 5, you know, 4 actually ports really easily into 5, so it's not that big a deal. But sending all of those debates aside, because we're not here to dive into Kingdom Hearts lore and how there's actually a story reason that Sora looks the way that he does. Um, you know, if you are deep in that Kingdom Hearts lore and have that mind going all crazy because of how complicated it is, you might actually understand why he looks that way. But I actually want to talk about the prospects of this game coming to Switch because that's actually been what people have been talking to me about all weekend is, Nate, we got Kingdom Hearts, you know, one, two, three. Are we going to get four on Switch? And there's a couple caveats I want to say about this. Sure, maybe, someday but not in the way you want it. Now, we got Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, 3. Got a lot of those games were basically streaming games. So they sucked. Square Enix streaming servers were horrible. They kind of gave us our worst case nightmare. We've actually seen some streaming games like Control and others do fairly well on Switch in terms of how well they perform. Even Hitman 3 does pretty well on Switch, another streaming game, but Kingdom Hearts games, even now when there's less players, have been a hot, mess. Whatever Square is doing streaming wise, whatever servers, whatever company they partnered with, it's a shit show and they need to stop. And uh, I think because of it being a shit show, it's possible we don't even get Kingdom Hearts 4 on Switch. But I have another reason why we won't get Kingdom Hearts 4 on Switch, but maybe we will still get it on a Nintendo platform is they came out and basically admitted the game is in early development. That means we're at least three, four, maybe five years away based on how long Square takes to typically make these games. So by then we could easily be on Nintendo's next platform and you can never say never on Nintendo's next platform. It will be more powerful, much more capable to run Unreal Engine 5. Not that Switch can't. Switch is a supported platform for Unreal Engine 5, but to really get the full Brux of it and hopefully get a native port. That's what we all hope for, and that's where we look to Nintendo's next hardware, which I think we all can agree will be out in four or five years, right? Like, I don't, I don't think I'm sitting here, you know, this isn't like Switch Pro stuff coming now, you know, let's all get angry. We're talking hypothetically. So next up is a really interesting story. Uh, it's causing a lot of conversation, and that's because Sony, you know, the group that does PlayStation and everything, invested $1 billion 
Well, sort of. They partnered with another company to do it. Uh, into Epic Games. Now, Epic Games has seen its valuation skyrocket year over year over year. In fact, they're worth over $30 billion at this point. Uh, and they're doing really well. Epic Games is obviously well known for the Unreal Engine and, well, Fortnite, right? Like, that's kind of their big bread and butter. They're a consistent money-making game. Uh, nothing wrong with that. That's neither here nor there. It's not the only game they make, but that's the one they focus on. And obviously, their engine and licensing fees make a ton of money. Uh, so why is Sony investing all this money? Because Sony's already been investing in uh, Epic Games, $250 million less than a year ago. So why are they going in deeper? Well, let's actually dive into some direct quotes from some people at Sony, the partner company partnering with them for this investment, and from Tim Sweeney from Epic Epic Games himself. So the first quote is actually going to be coming from Kenshiro Yoshida, Chairman, President, and CEO of Sony Group Corporation. And he says, as a creative entertainment company, we are thrilled to invest in Epic to deepen our relationship in the metaverse field, a space where creators and users share their time. We are also confident that Epic's expertise, including their powerful game engine, combined with Sony technologies, will accelerate our various efforts, such as the development of new digital fan experiences in sports and our virtual production initiatives and then the partner the company that partnered with Sony is actually called Kirkby and this is from Soren Thorup Sorensen CEO of Kirkby and he says Epic Games is known for building playful and creative experiences and empowering creators large and small a proportion of our investments is focused on trends we believe will impact the future world that we and our children will live in this investment will accelerate our engagement in the world of digital play and we are pleased to be investing in epic games and support their continued growth journey with a long-term focus toward future metaverse and then Tim Sweeney CEO and founder of Epic Games said the following as we reimagine the future of entertainment and play we need partners who share our vision we have found this in our partnership with Sony and Kirkby this investment will accelerate our work to build the metaverse and create spaces where players can have fun with friends brands can build creatives and immersive experiences and creators can build the community that thrives now, obviously, uh, this is just a lot of pretense, a lot of talk about potential stuff that could happen in the future. Obviously, Sony's planning to use Unreal Engine 5 for a bunch of their games. So, you know, I, I don't, you know, they could have just licensed it. They don't got to invest a billion dollars to do that. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, I do think that they have a fundamental belief that Epic Games is going to be a market leader in the metaverse. You know, technically, the metaverse already exists. I, it's more of an idea than a, a full reality at this moment. The metaverse is supposed to be the future of the internet and Web 3.0, and um, where we're all living in this like virtual space. And I don't know. It, it kind of seems uh, more wishy-washy than anything. I don't know that we're gonna ever fully exist in a metaverse-like area. But you know what? We've seen like Ready Player One, that movie, and, and other things kind of explore uh, this this whole future of a metaverse-like existence. So, who am I to say? never uh it probably happened sometime in my lifetime i guess my you no know, someday my kids will be walking around with contacts in their eyes that put them in a virtual world more than they're in the real world and then they get hit by a bus as they walk across the street because they're not looking where they're going because they're too busy playing some virtual game as they walk like you know kind of like people now when they're walking with their cell phones and don't pay any attention and bump into things and hit by cars and all sorts of dumb crap. So look, okay, like I'm not gonna say that this isn't going to exist or doesn't exist in some form already. It's just kind of interesting to see that these companies believe in it this much to invest so much money. But hey, you know what? Epic Games does have a huge community. They do have a huge support system within the game industry due to their engine. So uh, yeah, I guess we'll just have to sit around and see what the future of the metaverse holds. And I just hope it's not like just an NFT fest because I think we've seen too much negative, not that positive can't come out of NFTs, but too much negative to really bet the future of gaming on such a outlandish idea as to uh, buy virtual spaces on a server. And our last story is one where I'm trying to save you guys some money. Best Buy is running a really cool sale right now on some big games. Uh, basically knocking a bunch of AAA exclusive games on Switch down to 40 bucks and one down to 30. In fact, the one that got knocked down to 30 is Me Topia, Digital or physical, doesn't matter. But the $40 ones are obviously the ones that we're more interested in. That's Breath of the Wild, Mario Odyssey, Fire Emblem Three Hopes. Oh, and by the way, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition physical or digital, doesn't matter which one you get, they're $40 right now for a limited time at Best Buy. And you know what? Credit to Best Buy. Can we give them like a shout out? 
I don't know what's going on with them, like in calendar year 2022, they've been running some really insane and consistent sales on Switch exclusive games that I've just not seen anyone else do. Every now and then you'll see Amazon lower something like $45, but nothing really competes. You never see Walmart with these kind of sales or Target. You know, every now and then you get like a buy two, get one sale like on Amazon just did, but Man, this is a really, really weird. I guess I chose a good time to partner with Best Buy this year. And I guess my representative at Best Buy was not kidding when he said Nintendo is really pushing Best Buy as a major partner for these sales. So a lot of these sales are made possible because Nintendo's pushing for them. So, hey, you know what? If Nintendo and Best Buy wanna get like this, Cool, you guys can go ahead and use my affiliate link down below. I'm not even gonna link to the individual games. I'm gonna link because they have an entire sales section page set up for these games. Uh, so yeah, go, go check that out and uh, get some cheap games uh, that maybe you were waiting for price drops on. Maybe you wanted Metopia to be cheaper. Maybe you wanted, I don't know, maybe you were waiting price drop on Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. I don't know, you guys let me know if you decide to purchase any of these games down in the comments below. I wanna thank everyone so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rubblejans from Nintendo Prime, and I'm gonna catch you guys in the next video. This thing sold really well in the UK.